Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors, and finally we're going to do batteries. Batteries. Batteries are misunderstood. They're the most oversold part of the car. Your battery hardly ever goes bad. But let me show you some of the stuff about batteries so you have a little better understanding of their function and their form. First of all, first of all, what does a battery do? It provides a reserve for electricity. It's like a, it's like a water tower. It's got a, it's got a, a lot of energy inside it. Now, once it's drained, you can refill it. It's a storage battery. So just because the battery's dead doesn't mean it's bad. It just, needs, it just means that it needs to be refilled. So the battery is used to start the car when you need a 150 amp burst to go into the starter motor. Uh, it's used around idle or so when the, uh, the car is not making enough electricity off the generator or alternator to run the lights and the heater motor and, and so forth. Um, so it provides electricity down around idle to keep the car running and it acts as a ballast to hold the whole system at around 13 to 14 volts. I know it's called a 12 volt battery, but it's not. It's a 13.2 volt battery. Let's take a look at a couple, uh, couple guts here of the inside of a battery. This is out of an old 6 volt battery with the exposed terminals on the outside. And down inside here are the plates. And we've got the spongy lead, which is uh, located in, in some little uh, uh, fibrous kind of uh, envelopes. And then we've got the, the lead plates, which are out here. Those are, are uh, slid between e each other. And uh, sulfuric acid is run on the inside. And when it's fully charged, the fluid on the inside of the battery turns to sulfuric acid. and then when you want to discharge the battery, you connect the post to, together and you begin to draw a current and that sulfuric acid works, a, um, works on the lead plates, releases the electricity that's inside the battery and finally turns into water at which point the battery is dead, but not bad. So this is a six volt battery with the, with the two, two different sets of plates in it and so forth. If you come to our technical seminars, you can actually look at this stuff a little more carefully. Here we've got a 12 volt battery which is more like a group 24 battery that would be in your car. I took the top of this one off and you can see that down inside here we've got connections that are made. Originally they're made on the outside on, a, on those old 6 volts but they, here they're made on, on the inside. The number of plates on the inside determines how much electricity this battery will hold. And just offhand they'll hold about 80 amp hours. That means that they will deliver 80 amps for one hour or um, one amp for 80 hours. It's an enormous, amount of, an enormous amount of energy. Some of the batteries that we get are maintenance free batteries. Okay? They got posts on the top, but you can't get inside them. So how do you know if they're any good? You don't know. These guys are just making a, a bet with you that you're going to own the uh, car. Uh, for a less time than you own the battery. There's no way to service these. There is a certain amount of, ele of uh, uh, electrolyte lost every time it's charged, so eventually they run out of water. But they last a pretty long time. Maintenance free. All that means is you cannot service it. Doesn't mean it doesn't have to be serviced. It just means you can't service it. Here's another one. Maintenance free. The, uh, there's no way to, to get to the post up on top to get these out of the way. Then we have our side post battery, and there's no point in having a side post battery in an MG because all they do is go up and hit the side of the battery box and dead short and burn up your car, so no point there. So here's the type of battery that you might have in your car, and look, I've made it look just like the battery in your car because it's all covered with, with dirt and air on top. Now if we take our, our voltmeter, Andy's going to get in close here, and uh, we're going to go between the two posts. We can see that we've got around 12 volts or so here on the, on the scale. But if I take my, my lead, my one lead here, and put it in the dirt, looky here. This is just in the dirt on top of the battery. All right, so we're not getting too much current passed through here, but we're getting some current passed through, which means that the top of your battery is filthy dirty, it's going to self-discharge. The secret to battery, uh, battery longevity is to keep them clean.
Now here we are back after I cleaned off the battery. I wasn't going to take you over to the hose and so forth. So the, the condition of the battery is, is uh, controlled by the specific gravity of, of the electrolyte. And you can either use one of these guys with a little floating ball. Maybe Danny can get in here and, and, uh, and we can, oh man, if we can get enough electrolyte in here, I don't know. Let me try another one here. See if we can get enough in here. We've got an awful lot of air. Now it's hard to tell if this is going to read as high as it might. You see we can draw up just a little bit more out, out of here. And um, anyway, this isn't a very good example, but we're looking for the specific gravity here. And we're looking for consistency from one cell to the next. If the battery's good, then the cells will all have the same condition of charge, all from, uh, well, up to about 1275, which means 1.275 times as heavy as water. There's also other hydrometers that you can use with these uh, uh, bulb things. These are very, very accurate, very, very, very nice, but uh, they, they don't tell you a whole lot more than the one I had, and the problem is I haven't got enough electrolyte in my demonstration battery here to draw enough out to show you what, the, what this guy does. But once you're sure that it's fully charged, which is 1.275, sometimes 1.250, uh, on your battery hydrometer, then you can go ahead and determine how much electricity there is in the battery. Now we've got a very handy tester here that I know that you don't have at home, but you can use your starter motor instead. I'm, if I hook this guy up and begin to run him, and Danny can c come in here close, uh, we'll see that my voltage here is, is up about 11 volts, and this guy's starting to warm up. I can feel the heat. Pretty soon you'll be able to see these coils turn red hot inside my tester. Now this thing's loading at about 100 amps, I think. See how those are red now? I'm, I'm sure the camera's pick, picking that up. I could roast a hot dog here. You can do the same thing by spinning your starter motor and watching the voltage. You don't want the voltage to drop b below 10 volts for 20 seconds. That's the test. Now, the most common electrical problem in, in the car is bad battery clamps. So to change your battery clamps, all you need to do is, you know, take, take them loose and... Uh, People, I tell people, oh, your, ba your battery clamps are loose, and they go, no, I, I looked at them. They look just fine. Well, they look fine, but down inside here, there's a lot of corrosion. Okay, so you've got to take s some, some sort of cleaner and clean these guys up. Okay, this is a knife style, and, and clean up the post here. And have, having done so and taken off some of the old oxidized um, lead, then if you have a pair of battery spreader pliers you can spread the clamp back out get him back in and then and then tighten him up tightly you should always put down it I've got the wrong one I should put the green one on the negative but you should always put down an insulator and that that helps prevent that self discharge that I showed you before so we can tighten this guy back up and now well, let me try here, try to get him snugged up here, and then we'll take our uh, voltmeter and put that across the face. So the battery is your reserve. It's, it's, uh, it, it's what uh, offers a ballast in the system. It provides electricity when the uh, car's running too slowly for the generator or alternator to put, put out as much electricity as you might need. You know, when you're idling in the winter and your turn signals are on and your heater motor's on and so forth. And of course it provides that huge burst of electricity necessary to run the starter motor. So we watch our, our meter here, and here we've run up oh, almost at, uh, about 12 volts here on my meter. But if we touch it across the top of the battery, of course there's no discharge because now the top of the battery is clean. So proper battery maintenance requires that you keep the cells filled with distilled water, deionized water, certainly not water with iron in it, that wrecks the battery real fast. The battery is kept at a relatively full rate of charge, which you can do occasionally with a, with a, uh, a charger, or you can get those chargers that monitor the, the uh, uh, charge of the battery and give it a burst of voltage whenever necessary. 
Um, and you've got to keep your battery post clean. If you do that, your battery will last for years. Okay? So before you throw your battery away or think it's faulty, check, check it out. Get it clean, get it filled up, get it charged, check the gravity, and then see if it works. So I hope this has been instructive a little bit. Group 24 batteries for oh, almost all the MGs, the T-types and the um, uh, 1970 four and a halfs and newer, that's group 24, and we use group 26 in place of twin sixes on all the MGAs and the MGBs up through 74. Thanks a lot. Send us some emails. We'll make videos of whatever you want us to make. Well, almost. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Thanks.